Greetings, heavenly creatures. Welcome to today's heavenly prophetic cattle. Oh, that's a fun one. Can't wait to get that for a reading. Um, but welcome. If this is your first time, welcome back. If you've been here with me before. Ooh, as soon as I started, my left ear started doing this weird thing. Is someone's left ear bothering them? <laughs> Hang on. It's like pressure-y. Like the way that it would feel if I went to Colorado because it's such a different altitude, you know? Okay, let's just like pop that, can we? Can we? No, we're going to stay weird. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> I hate that. You know how it makes it feel like you can hear yourself inside of your head all echoey and strange? No me gusta. Um, Any who's old. So we are doing this prophetic tarot. Um, with the restrictions of the prophetic ministry, which is no dates, meets, babies, direction, or correction. So we're going to be really big picture, casting vision type of a reading, and I'm super excited about it. Um, it's been really fun to kind of change up my reading style as I do these. So, oh my gosh. Guys, I am shook. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember the very first reading that I did with this deck. But I did a reading with this deck and they were in alphabetical order. And remember I was like, I don't have the first card. The first card is all. And I looked all over my room for it. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I literally went through the whole deck looking for it. Like two or three times. Okay, that's crazy i'm just gonna be amazed at that for a minute yay things spontaneously being returned to us okay i also want to get one of these just because i felt like using this deck today so we're just gonna start off grabbing one still like because <laughs> every once in a while I would still think about it and just be like dang it I wish I had that card Hang on. if you guys lost something that really means something to you I it might be being returned <laughs> or found when you are worried about your place in the world remember this gentle creature Standing in the midst of a starry sky, they gaze intently at their own palms. What is contained within the space of two hands? How can any of us capture what the universe truly holds for us? It could be an overwhelming question, can't it? You could journal on the question of what is all in so many ways. Perhaps this is a reminder that we are all, just that, all. None of us are any less valuable than the next member of our tribe. When we consider that our tribe consists of everything, like our friend in this card, we may find ourselves contemplating our own worth. For those times that it seems to be more than we can hold, take a step back, sit down, feel your own root extending deep into the earth, press your spine against something firm like a tree or a friend. See your own head opening up to thrust up a ray of light that goes on and on and on into the sky. Repeat the following to yourself, I am all. I am enough. All is all. Chant the words as you feel everything expanding outward. Hold on to the feeling of being one with everything. When that feeling fades, start from the beginning. Look around you, dear one. Who else needs this message? It is your turn to remind another that they too are all. Mm. Maybe someone has a hard time hearing in their left ear and... We're going to have a pop. 
for this reading. At least I hope, because I would love to have that pop. careful about this one because it might be correcty. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is fun. The violet flame is a sacred ascension tool. It was gifted to humanity by Saint Germain and his twin, Lady Portia, the leaders of the Aquarian Age. Both assist twin flames and lightworkers to activate their spiritual gifts so that they come into alignment with their missions. Adopting a regular practice of immersing your body in this violet liquid fire energy will activate your pineal gland and awake your spiritual DNA. This will unlock your hidden power, helping you align with your ultimate truth, allowing you to access the highest version of yourself. It can also be used to rejuvenate your mind, body, soul, and heart, which will accelerate your personal healing and transformational growth. Practicing the ancient principles of alchemy helps you become the magician of your own reality. When the Master Alchemist appears, which is this card, you have the ability to achieve self-mastery. It will be important that you get clear on what you desire. Use the Violet Fire to transmute low vibrational thoughts into higher vibrational energy that will elevate your frequency, giving you crystal, crystal clear vision to manifest your destiny. I'm going to send that violet flame energy to my left ear right now whilst it is still ringing. Hang on one second. Okay. This is like what I'm getting is that some of us are receiving this concept of all is one and one is all <laughs> instead of all for one and one for all it's all is one and one is all um, with a lot of pressure to be the one to change it all And the funny thing about wanting to change things is that oftentimes what we want to be changed will be rebel, repelled, yeah, rebelled, <laughs> repelled by that force of desire. with this so this violet flame activation I really love these kinds of things because what it is is it's just like it's a way of visualizing in um in the charismatic tradition they called it liquid love and I think they actually call it that in a lot of um like non-christian spiritual practices as well that they have you visualize like liquid love flowing through your veins and it's like the violet flame is a lot like um, the charismatic glory cloud, which is just like, it's the highest quote unquote frequency image of an atmosphere that you can imagine. So like this violet flame is this idea that it burns away everything not in alignment with love, unconditional love. And the glory cloud does the same in just like not a fiery way, <laughs> right? And maybe in more of like an earthy way. And so I both I both love and hate both of those concepts because I love them because if you have the right ideas about them and beliefs about them, it can be incredibly transformative. But if you don't, it can be forceful. And that's sort of what I'm feeling here. There's this I feel like we have this invitation to release the pressure and to remove the force.
end. While partnering with, you know, sending this violet flame of love, <laughs> right? Everywhere where it's welcome and sending the glory cloud wherever it's welcome. That's always done with free will choice in mind, right? And that what can happen is that our ideas of what love is supposed to look like becomes imposed onto the collective, onto the all, when the way we give and someone else receives isn't necessarily reciprocals. And so a lot of people with the really beautifully intended heart to love the all actually become Can get into a space of violation of love itself by imposing the will right like even when i mentioned this it said to manifest your destiny i was like oh god that gives like manifest destiny vibes and i don't <laughs> that's so funny it's coming back around to that because it's like yeah it's this idea that like certain people or whatever it's so funny it's like hyper spiritualized now i'm like what are we doing like certain people feel that it's just like their destiny to whatever usher in the golden age destroy the matrix right <laughs> oh you know instigate the renaissance um initiate revival whatever it is right and it's like it's so funny because in order to do that what a lot of people do is they pick up this like attitude of like well the lord wills it or like I'm doing this for love. It's like even unconditional love, which is the least forceful force on the planet, can be weaponized and used with force for unfortunate outcomes. This is like, you know, I mean, the Crusades was not a bunch of people who were really hateful. They were a bunch of people who genuinely believed that it was the destiny on their life to do what they were doing really really think about that like really put yourself in their shoes and then consider you know if what they were doing was like a hundred percent violation is there anything in me that's like at least one percent doing that that's at least one percent violating someone else's free will because I think I know better because I think I'm destined or predestined and ordained or that it's my, you know, starseed destiny or that it's my, um, my right to manifest or whatever, right? Because if there's one thing we do come into this earth predestined to do is to have free will choice and take responsibility and so maybe it is true and there's even certain things that I've chosen to believe that are my destiny here this being one of them <laughs> but it's because I decided destiny is like a meal it's like a plate offered to you or a cup offered to you. You get to decide whether or not to eat it. You get to choose whether or not to drink it. And so to paint the picture as if someone is more holier than anyone else because of their destiny is so goofy. Like people can be born with capacity and they can develop it and destiny hand in hand with that. So someone can be born with very little destiny, but choose to develop the capacity in order to hold a much larger capacity and someone with a born with a great capacity can squander every opportunity that they have and end up with a very small plate. And so I think this is an invitation both to take the pressure off and to notice any areas of our life where we feel maybe we're actually a little bit in violation of free will or maybe if we had our way in the world, <laughs> like if you were really, let's say, in charge of a whole nation, right? Like, what would you actually do differently? 
right? Or like, if you really want to destroy the matrix, okay, all right, like, what's your alternative? <laughs> Probably a situation in which your ideas and beliefs and what makes you feel good about yourself is imposed on the collective, which again, is just creating another one. It's just from like, <laughs> right? One controlling mechanism to the next. Maybe let's not. <laughs> Maybe we could just deal with our control issues this time. <laughs> I mean, I'll fly out of the way, you know what I'm saying? We could do this for another 2,000 years, but maybe this time we can really actually figure out how to respect other people's free will choice. And that means people's free will sometimes to choose things that we think are genuinely altogether bad and wrong. And maybe even that violate our manifest destiny, right? And then we got to creative. We got to get creative with how to work our way around it. And I think here, if we were to really ponder beauty and truth in the most significant forms that we can conceive of them in this now moment. That we would probably throughout it somehow find the sanctity and importance of choice. And that anytime manifest destiny gets in the way of that, anytime our ideas that we are predestined to be whoever of whatever and achieve whatever, it gets us into a really murky psychological program and swamp and function where we are not too far from imposing our idea of what beauty and truth is forcefully in the exact same way or in the same manner as the control that we, that is what we think we are <laughs> freeing ourselves from. It Like it doesn't matter how align someone is with unconditional love if they push that in a forceful way it removes itself from itself it's an open field of invitation and it is for each individual to behold. Not to force or have forced upon them. Okay. I feel like I got a little bit off of our prophetic. <laughs> I think I got a little correct, correcty there, but I'm going to trust it that that's okay. <laughs> Uh, I knew there would be a little bit of a transition <laughs> into this, but um, yeah, we'll leave this one here. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate your time and attention. It is your most valuable asset and it is such an honor to receive it. And I, I do receive it fully and with gratitude and um, really appreciate you. <laughs> um and if you would like to book a private reading, you can do so in the link in the bio. You can also find all my other social media links in there as well if you'd like to connect in another way and see some of my other flavors of artistic expression. <laughs> 
very different than what I do here. Um, but no matter what, I love you beyond reason and I trust you with you. Thank you again and I just hope to see you in the next video.